How are you guys doing? It's Tuesday. We're going to take a small pause in Matthew. We'll go back tomorrow and be in Matthew chapter 8. And I encourage you to read ahead. But I was out pruning in the vineyard. And I don't know if you can even see in the back there. We've got those all ready and, and working on. And we're now on these two rows getting ready to, to prune the vineyard today and getting some more done. And as we've already talked about... That, that God will produce fruit in us, it hit me. What a great example. And I wanted to share with you because I'm learning a lot about vineyards. And, and as I'm looking into this, I'm saying, man, I, I'm understanding scripture so much more because of experience to it. So I'm going to read to you something out of John today. We'll go back to Matthew tomorrow. I'm going to read something out of John 15 and maybe hopefully enlighten on something that I really didn't fully understand until I experienced it. So I'm going to read something to you. This is uh, Matthew 15, starting in verse 1. It says, I am the vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that does not bear, that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it may be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remember, or remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Now, this passage is a very interesting passage because sometimes... We've, we've used these words to maybe be a little bit harsher than what we should be. We say it to ourselves, well, you better start producing fruit. Well, let me ask you a quick question. What fruit do you see? It's not producing any right now. Now, if you were to maybe process it, it's fruit is limbs. But in reality, this fruit is taking a break. It's not producing anything. It's sitting here. It's in a season of rest. And my job right now as an example, as the gardener, is to come and prune. The second part of that verse where we saw that any fruit that does produce or any branch that does produce fruit gets pruned. So we may, it makes sense to us, right? Let me explain how that works. So this, this vine is growing and it did good this year and, and I need it to produce some more fruit. Well, real simple. This vine's a little extra long and it did great, but all I do is I come in here and I cut it. I cut it the second little nib and it does its job and the little extra gets thrown away. Now, that vine is, oh, that branch is still doing good. It just needs some pruning. You fell a little there, but stay with me. And so what's going on here, if that vine needs the pruning, then that's doing a good job. And the pruning does a great thing. But when we read the first part of that passage, it says, for the Father takes away. Now, again, I don't try to teach the Greek, mainly because I don't know the Greek. But I do know, and I spent some time looking at what that word were. In the NIV, it's translated take away. And it's a Greek word called eros, probably saying it wrong. But that word in many other places of the Bible means lift up or take up, not take away. And, and in fact, take away doesn't mean wrong even per se, but we make it mean more than what it's saying. Now I'm going to show you something, so the camera's going to move. I'm going to show you what I did here. Stay with me. You see behind me, now you're going to fall, so don't fall. There's this little branch right here that's been zip-tied. This branch didn't do very well this year. This branch was hanging low. And in fact, it was going down and it was on the ground. Now, I don't want to lose this branch, and I want it to produce some fruit, but it didn't. But what I needed to do is I needed to, to take it up. I needed to pick it up 
it didn't produce fruit, but I also don't want to lose the branch. So as the gardener, I took the fruit or the branch, stay with me there. I took the branch and I lifted it up. You see, that's eros. That's what that word is meaning. God doesn't look at us and go, ah, oh, you didn't produce fruit, you're out of here. But he says, I want to produce fruit in you. And so I might need to bend it a little. If you've noticed here, I've bent the, the branch and I'm trying to teach the branch. It's actually away from its little friends here that needs some pruning as well. And, and it's doing some things that I need it not to do. And so it's isolated and it's pulled away. But ultimately, as the gardener, this is going to start growing and start turning direction and going to fill up this line. See, that's what that words, those words in Scripture are saying. Jesus says that the gardener is God. And he comes and he says, look, I see that you're in the dirt. I see that you're not producing fruit. And I'm going to take you up. I'm going to lift you up. Now, yes, Scripture does say ultimately, and you can't see it. Maybe you can, but in the background, there's a whole bunch of prunings and trimmings that are on the ground that after we're done trimming here, we're going to come and pick those trimmings up and we'll throw them away. But right now in this season of the vineyard, we're taking up, we're pruning, taking care of, cleaning off. Now we're currently blessed in our society in this understanding of, of vineyard growth. You see, I've got poles and these poles make pathways and holds the branches and vineyard up. Back in the day, what this would have been is possibly on a rock. And you'll see how the branch or the vine kind of grows. Well, that would have grown over a rock. So again, if, if there was a, a branch sitting on the ground covered with dirt, not producing, what a vineyardist would do, and that might not be the proper name, but he would come and grab another rock and put it under that little branch so that it gets clean again, so that it's taken up to grow. So when you read this story, don't look at God as, as he's coming around and says, well, you're not doing it today. You're cut off. But what he says is, I want you to do something. I'm going to bend you a little. I'm going to stretch you a lot. I'm going to maybe isolate you so you start doing the way that I want you to do it. But that's the joy of what the good gardener does. And don't read that scripture saying, oh no, man, if I don't produce fruit, God, God's going to attack and cut me away. He will prune. He will clean. And ultimately, the good gardener wants to care for you. And that's what that scripture is saying. It's a powerful thing. We just got done with the Sermon on the Mount. And the whole point of the sermon was for Jesus to say, you cannot do this apart from Christ. There's one way and one way to God, and that's Jesus. There's one way God's going to produce fruit in your life, as we stay connected. And I want you to understand that. Now, for some of us, the reality is the season of the vineyard will be done. And I am not dismissing that part in Scripture. But what I want you to understand, that God is not coming around chopping branches that aren't working. But God and His ultimate authority and power will prune us, will guide us, and ultimately, as long as we are willing to be connected to the branch, then God will garden us, will guide us, so that we will produce fruit. This seems like a small thing, maybe to you, and you might already know this, but I really wanted this to be known. Because we're going to start walking now in Matthew and seeing as, as God is beginning to, Christ, God through Christ, or Christ is sharing this message with his disciples, and ultimately will send them on their path of their journey to be good branches. And ultimately, as well, 
to share the news to you and to me, for us to be good branches. There's going to be a moment in your life, though, that you're going to need pruning, lifting up, washing. That word pruning as well, that could be translated cleaned. You realize that as you start weighing down, and I'll show you that when, the, when they start budding and, and the leaves start coming out and the fruit starts hanging low. And sometimes God needs to clean us off again, lift us up, prune and clean up so that we can produce more fruit. It's not your fruit. Let me clarify that. It is the fruit that ultimately comes from the vine. And guys, that's what God's offering. That's the purpose of why we're spending time in his word and what he's calling to you and to me. Do you want to produce his fruit? Now, if you don't, I understand some people don't. And that's sad. And some of us look at life and go, you know, I can do it on my own. <laughs> I want to do it my way. And naturally we'll disconnect from the branch, unfortunately. But as the gardener, he's going to lift us up. He's going to try to, in every opportunity, give you to grow. And that growth comes from his word. Scripture just said that when we read it, that, that we've been cleaned by God's word, that Christ became flesh and dwelt among us, and his sacrifice is what we follow. So there's a lot more to talk, and we'll talk through that. But please understand that. When you're reading that passage in John, that word take away, I'm not, I got no issue with it, Ivy, but it would probably be better translated lifted up because that's what a good gardener does. He lifts up the branches that aren't producing the fruit that he wants. He prunes the ones that are so they can produce more because he's the good gardener. Jesus is the vine and that is our path to produce fruit for Christ. Hope you have a blessed day. Keep reading your Bible. We'll see you tomorrow. That was a little longer than 10 minutes. I'm going to go back to pruning. Bye, guys.